it's campaign money, it's lobbying money, it's think tank money, it's taking Bob Bork's paper and spreading it all around. Oh, it's, 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 it's every a deluge. part. It's it a is. deluge of it money. Is. But for Democrats, now this is a delicate question, and I am a Democrat, and mm -hmm. I was in a Democrat I'm a Democrat. And I was, in, I was a cabinet officer. But listen, if we're talking about monopolization and the diminution of antitrust and money in politics, Democrats have been not as bad as Republicans, arguably, but hey. And look, that's why we've got to have real change in Washington. The way I see this, Bob, is that we've got to get out there and be real clear about what we're running on. We are running to try to make this government work again, not for the richest Americans, not for the ones who have enormous power and can spend a million dollars a day lobbying, but make it work for working families, but make it a, work for the poor. Here's but, but here's the deal, Bob. We not only got to say it, we not only got to talk the talk, we got to be willing to walk the walk if we are blessed to get power again. Well, it's all about power. I mean, can you get power? I mean, I think you can. You can get power without uh, sucking up to the moneyed interests, uh, but the money interests are so overwhelming. And yep. is the Democratic Party, as a party, as capable a party. of biting the hand that feeds them? I mean, it's not as big a hand that feeds the Republicans, but it's still a hand that feeds them. And are we going to field and be able to field candidates in 2018? And also, I don't want to get make you in a, okay. put you in an awkward Let's stop position, right there. but are we going to be able to field candidates that really do have that sense that power has got to be shifted in this country. Okay, so let me do it both ways. The first is, this is a question that keeps me up at night. I am deeply, deeply worried about this. I'm worried about it because, boy, if we don't get out there and do it, I guarantee nobody else is. And, and this country have, fundamentally changes. And we're going to have Trumps as far as the eye yep. can see. As, uh, it's not just way, Donald Trump. Not, it's, that's right. It's demagogues. And then, and then, and then. But let me tell you the part that makes me optimistic. Here's what makes me optimistic. I, I went to the inauguration. I wanted to see, uh, up close. I, I, no, it's now burned into the backs of my eyeballs. Yes. No, no, no. And I wanted to see this. And I believe when the history of this time is written, they'll talk about that dark speech. They'll talk about the first fight that man chose to make the, the, the emblematic of his presidency was how big were the crowds that came to adore me, right? But when you write the history of this period, it will also be about the next day. The day when women in their pink pussy hats and friends of women and little kids and seniors, people came out. We had the biggest protest march in the history of the world. And, and from there, look where it went. People said, eh, yeah, but you know, the sophisticates, will they still be here in a week? And the answer was, oh yeah. Will they still be here in a month? And the answer was, yes. And will they still be here in a year? More than ever. Will they vote? Will they vote? Well, I'll tell you the this. Largest, the largest party in America is not the Democrats or Republicans. It's the party of non-voters. That's right. Especially in midterms. Yep. And the real question is turnout. And are people who are fed up with not just Trump, but also big money and the moneyed interests, are they going to actually get out and vote? So I think that voting is an act of optimism. Mm -hmm. You do it if you believe that your vote, combined with a lot of others, will actually make a difference. So to the extent that Democrats in these races in 18 stand up and say, here's what I stand for, here's what I will be held accountable for. I'm going to make it clear what I'm willing to do. I think we pull people in who are ready to vote. Well, I think you're right. I think you're right. Uh, you know, in 2015, I was out in red states. This is the start of 2015. And I was talking to people who were angry. They weren't getting ahead. They were just working harder than ever. Yeah. The game is rigged. And I said, well, who are you thinking about voting for? And I kept on getting back the same two names from the same people. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm thinking about either Donald Trump 
were Bernie Sanders. Mm -hmm. And I said, how can you put those two names in the same sentence? That's, but they said, we want somebody who's going to stand up to the money and stand yeah. up to the power yeah. and stand up to the rigged game. Uh, and the question we are now talking about is whether in 2018 and in future years, Democrats are willing to do that. Yeah. And you think they are? Well, I mean, put, it, look. It's, we're talking about, I mean, it's, it's a huge power shift. It is. It is the power shift. This is everything that's broken you can tie back right into this. It's the seizure of government, our government, by the rich and the powerful, and that they are making it work for them. And what we've got going on our side, it's a whole lot more of us than there is of them. And if we will actually use the power of the vote, we have the capacity to take this historic moment and to turn this democracy into something that truly represents the people. Well, we have to. I mean, we, we have to. We don't have a, a chance. But, you know, in 2000, Al Gore, when he was running, uh, the only time in the last, it was only the last month, where his polls started to really soar was when he said, we've got to take on the privileged and the powerful. Yeah. And that phrase, and he was kind of surprised. You know, mm -hmm. how did that, be? what's mm -hmm. going on? It was the first inkling that I had, well, I sort of had inklings during the Clinton administration, but the first inkling I had that taking on the privileged and the powerful, that there was a sense in this country that things had got off track in some very, very fundamental way. Yeah. But he didn't follow through. The Democrats haven't followed through. Obama, I love Obama. I mean, I thought he was, even if Trump was not such a horrible person. Obama would still, in my books, be a hero. But he, you know, I wish he had been more aggressive. 